The shearwaters here are the canary in the coal mine for the health of the oceans. We've been pumping plastic into the oceans for 70 years. Every piece of plastic that's ever been manufactured still exists somewhere in the environment. And these birds are the ones that are suffering the consequences. They're sort of a, a sentinel of how healthy our oceans are. Probably about 2002, just uh, in the forest here, I found a skeleton of a shearwater chick, and it was quite alarming because through the rib cage you could see all these coloured pieces of plastic. I didn't really know what it was about then. I had no idea that seabirds did ingest plastic, so I uh, phoned a few colleagues that had been working out here during the 1980s, and they had no idea what I was talking about. What we have uncovered over the years of study is that the flesh-footed shearwater here is uh, certainly the most impacted seabird in the world in terms of ingesting plastic that is floating on the ocean. Generally, around 80 to 90 percent of chicks do have some plastic. We do go out after dark, and that is when the shearwater chicks do emerge from their burrows naturally and make their way down to the ocean to fly off. So, as they come out, we, we do uh, get them and we put a tube into their stomach, gently pump some water in, and they do vomit their stomach contents. Just came out of his mouth. Wow, that's what why we couldn't get the tube in and yep. why we couldn't get it out. A piece of the bottle cap. Wow. That's really good, isn't it? So he's got more in there. That's so he's in the bag. We we have been up late at night monitoring the birds and then up very early this morning combing the beaches looking for birds and we're able to retrieve that and we can count that and sort it and weigh it and try and get an idea of just how widespread this plastic is in the birds from year to year. We find a variety of things uh, in the birds, everything from unidentifiable small fragments to nurdles, the sort of production stock of raw plastic material that gets melted down and formed into everyday items. You can see there are many objects that we use in everyday life. There are bottle caps, We've got balloon clips, uh, another cap of some sort, and uh, top off perhaps a, a medicine bottle. If the birds are fed too much plastic as they're growing up and they have a belly full of plastic, they can't actually fit enough food in to develop properly. If their bellies are, are full of plastic, that's going to be a pretty daunting challenge. Imagine the intense weight of 35,000 Empire State Buildings. That's how much plastic is slated to be in our landfills by 2050. By that same year, there will be more plastics in our oceans than fish. It's not just bad for the environment, it's expensive. The fallout from plastic pollution adds up to 13 billion a year. But humans rely on plastics to a staggering degree. After all, they've changed our lives. Plastic medical devices, airbags, bike helmets, and airplane parts save lives every day. Plastic bottles deliver clean drinking water across the globe. So where did it all go wrong? Three words, single-use plastics. Lots and lots of them. We now buy a million plastic bottles every minute worldwide, only to throw them out moments later. Waste management systems simply can't keep up. 91% of plastic doesn't even get recycled. Instead, plastics are overflowing rivers and coastlines and ending up in our oceans. Mass plastic production exploded in the 1950s thanks to scientific innovations in the wake of World War II. Durable, long-lasting, and inexpensive, single-use plastic soon replaced kitchen plates, cutlery, packaging, you name it. That durability is also a huge problem. Our throwaway items take hundreds of years to biodegrade. So where does it all go? 
into giant garbage patches in the ocean, known as the Five Gyres. These ocean currents churn plastic waste into massive whirlpools. One is as big as Texas and contains 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic. Inside them, seabirds and marine life mistake larger plastic items with food or prey. Slowly, they break down into nearly invisible particles that permeate our waters. More and more people are waking up to the massive plastic problem and seeking solutions. One group in the Netherlands is designing a giant filter that captures debris from gyres and ultimately recycles it. Scientists are deploying wax worms to eat plastic bags. And the trash presso machine transforms plastic into building tiles. Over 60 countries have passed laws to scale back single-use plastics. Yet despite all this progress and innovation, we're still making and using more plastic than ever. So we do collaborate with researchers around the world with the data we're finding here. We do collect some of the nurdles off the beach. These are the raw pellets of plastic production. We have sent those to Japan where Professor Takata is looking at those just to uh, analyse what chemicals may be on the outside of those nurdles. So that's part of international research. Pops are very small, very tiny, tiny molecule. We cannot see. We can consider microplastics and plastics are host of pops in seawater. Plastics is a new pathway of pollutants to wild animals and human. And our recent study demonstrated that the portion of the pollutants in plastic can be transferred to the body or tissue of the wild animals. If the, we ingest the plastic through seafood, that may contain high concentration of and some of pops may be transferred and accumulated in the body. If we are exposed to high amounts of pops, that is dangerous for us. The problem is our endocrine system or immune system is disordered, disrupted. So the, if we are exposed to pops, we will be getting to sick very easily. If we wouldn't take any action for coming 20 years, the amount of plastics entering to the ocean would be increased by a factor of 10. So we have to reduce the amount of plastic to, this, to the sea. Plastics in the seabirds is something that maybe not everybody is aware of. The health of our seabirds is very important and perhaps the only reason this rainforest exists on this sand is the nutrients that these birds bring back year after year as they're coming into breed. So if the birds disappear that thing could be broken and the rainforest could diminish here. 